Hey guys, my name is Darren with Renaissance Coders, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Unity Think Training. In this episode, I'm going to talk about last week's problem, or actually from two weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to show you how I solved that one, and we're going to talk about a new problem. And finally, I'll sign you guys off with a think tip. Now, last week I asked you guys, or I'm sorry, two weeks ago I asked you guys to do the following problem where I wanted you to ghost an object on the cursor, map the object to the terrain as you move it around, and then place the object on the ground with full opacity whenever you click. Okay, and as always, I'd like to remind you guys that whenever you're looking at my solution, uh, it's not the only solution. There are plenty, uh, uh, plenty of different ways to do um, each problem, so don't get stuck on thinking uh, if you didn't do it my way, then uh, you did it wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and look at my project. I created this little uh, terrain so that you guys could see how this would work. All right. And so what I have here is this cube, if you can see here, following my cursor. Whenever it's green, it means I can drop the cube at that location. If it's red, that means that I can't. And what I've done here to pull this off is I've created a layer mask to tell me, hey, if I'm in the water, uh, I don't want to be able to drop the item there. However, if I'm not in the water, so if I'm over here on... Uh, on dry land then I can drop the item there so with this sort of system you have that sort of control okay and what I asked you guys to do was make it to where you click and the uh, the cube will drop there or the item will drop there however clicking is going to interfere with my camera control so what I did was map that function to the R key on my keyboard so when I press R the object will drop at that location and you can see that the bottom of the object is sort of resting on the uh, on the terrain and that's sort of an illusion what I've done there is I've made sure that the origin of the object is at the bottom of the cube so all I have to do is set the 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 items location to the hit point from my raycast okay so I can actually press C to create a new cube and I can move this one around if I press R uh, while I'm in the water it's not going to let me um, however I can drop this any other location Okay guys, so that's what it's going to look like. Uh, I'm sorry if this is a little bit laggy. I have a lot going on in this scene. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the scripts that I used here. I use a ghost item script and a ghost item manager script. The ghost item script goes on the item itself that's being ghosted. The manager is handling whatever the current ghost item is. Um, and there can only be one ghost item at a time. So let's go ahead and look at the ghost item script. Okay, so what I've done here is I've created a layer mask for the ground layer, and that's going to determine uh, what the the object can be dropped on. Okay, and I'm not going to go over this code in detail as usual. I just want to highlight some of the important points. I have um, basically I'm not doing any updating or uh, or any initialization in the start event function in this script because these functions are going to be called from my manager script. The manager is going to be controlling uh, which one of these functions is going to be executed. Okay, so I have it initialized, which is just going to set my material color for the object. Uh, I want to make sure that I store the natural color, so whenever I actually drop the item, I want to make sure I restore the natural color of that object. Okay, and I, I'm just doing some basic initialization stuff here. Uh, and then I have the update ghost item, which is going to call the functions uh, where I position the item with the cursor and I set the color uh, based on these following parameters. Okay, my set, seller, my set color script is going to be using a raycast uh, from my mouse position to the ground. It's going to look for the ground layer, and if it finds the ground layer, it's going to say, hey, is our layer um, from, our, from our current hit, uh, our, our hit variable, if that collider's game object's layer um, is not equal to water, then we can go ahead and say that this is allowed. So I set allowed to true. Otherwise, that means if we are on the water, then I set allowed to false and I mark the color to the unallowed color. 
Okay, position item with cursor. This one is pretty straightforward. I just use a physics ray cast, just like I did uh, above in the in the set color function. And all I do is I set the transform position to hit that point. And this is where I was saying if you have the origin at the bottom of your model or your mesh, this is going to be a lot easier for you because all you have to do is write this line of code, and it's automatically going to set the um, object on the terrain in a natural way. And then I have this drop item, which is going to say, if we press the, the, the button to drop the item, then we're going to check to see if it's allowed. So if we're not in the water, then we're going to change the colors. Okay, and, I'm, and, and then I'm going to return true, and we'll see why I'm returning true uh, in just a moment. Now you'll see throughout this script, I'm calling set material blend mode. Here I set it to opaque, so whenever we've dropped the item, item and up here in initialize, I set it to fade, so set material blend mode to fade. Uh, so let's take a look at what that is all about. Essentially what I'm doing is when I'm ghosting, I want to make sure my material is uh, not fully opaque so we can actually see through it a little bit. Uh, that is sort of the definition of ghosting right there. And the way, you to, the way to do this properly, if you're using the standard shader, is to access the blend mode within the standard shader. And you're going to have to set uh, a few parameters and if you want to go ahead and pause the video here I'm not going to go into detail about each line of code but if you want to pause and uh, go ahead and copy this method it's really useful essentially what it's doing is it's allowing you to switch the modes of your uh, standard shader from opaque to fade or you can even add in different modes for transparency um, but that's what this method does and it allows us to again see through the see through the ghost object so we're gonna make it to where it's not fully opaque and then whenever we drop the item we wanna make sure that we restore that opacity and so you can't see through it anymore okay let's go to our manager script where we're actually using these functions all we do in this short script is we have a static game object for ghost item and uh, the reason it's static is because we only we want to ensure that we're only going to have one ghost item, um, and so that's how we apply that principle. Now, in start, we're going to create new. Um, so right whenever I press play, I'm going to have an item ghosted on my cursor. And then what I do in update is I say, okay, if my ghost item exists, I'm going to update the ghost item. So I'm just calling that method. Um, and then what I do is I check for input. So if I press C, then I'm going to create a new item if one does not already exist. If I press R, then I'm going to drop the item at its current location. And that's what these create new and drop current methods look like. Um, pretty straightforward stuff if you want to pause and look at this at different points. I'm not going to explain it, but um, it is pretty straightforward. All right, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this again so we can see what it looks like in case you skip that part of the video. So again, we have the ability to move our object around. It's red whenever we can't drop it. It's green when we can drop it. I press R. I press C to create a new object, and I can drop these ghost items at different locations. Okay, let's take a look at this week's, uh, this week's problem. So this is what I'm asking you guys to do by next Thursday. So I have health bars on my characters, and I want them to face the camera at all times, regardless of the camera's orientation or rotation or whatever you want to say. Um, so let's think about our health bars. Our health bars are going to be UI elements within the scene, and they're going to be over uh, or, or wherever you want them to be relative to the character's position, but we're going to have several characters in our scene with health bars. These health bars are going to be UI elements or uh, world canvases, if you will. And what I want to do is I want these to always face the camera uh, dead on regardless of the camera's orientation. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our think tip for this week. So this think tip is, well, I'll go ahead and read it first and then we'll talk about it. So objectively study and research other people's implementations, consider their solution and search for flaws. Okay. And so one of the things that I really stress with this series is I don't want you guys to go on forums and look for other people's solutions and, and then just copy and paste them. However, even for me and a lot of professionals, we oftentimes get to that point where we just want to see how other people have done it because we've struggled with it for too long maybe and we just want to get it done. So if you ever get to that point and you just want to find out how other people approach the problem, whenever you do that, don't 
I'm still going to say don't copy and paste their code, but when you look at their solutions, um, I would advise you to sort of objectively look at them, meaning look at them with uh, logic and reason and see if you can find any flaws. So not only are you getting a solution that could work, you're also looking to how you can improve it. And that's going to ultimately make your solution much, much better. All right, guys, I'm going to sign you guys off with that think tip. Good luck on this week's problem, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.